Siri. It's about 8.45 a.m., just a few miles out from the town of... <sighs> Wrong device. Wrong device. Siri, it's about 8.46 a.m., just a few miles out from the town of Twin Peaks. Should be arriving at the local sheriff's station shortly. Breakfast this morning consisted of a sausage, egg, and cheese burrito and a large Dr. Pepper from Taco Bell. I don't recommend it. Thanks for reminding me to inform our viewers that this documentary will contain spoilers for Twin Peaks Seasons 1 and 2 and the prequel film, Fire Walk With Me. You have been warned. I'm not so special agent Ryan Camp. Like many other strange kids that grew up in the early 90s, such as myself, I fell in love with a little TV gem called Twin Peaks. This oddball show was definitely ahead of its time when it first aired on ABC in 1990, and its surreal new take on the small town drama would ensure that television would never be the same again. Created by Mark Frost and David Lynch, Twin Peaks followed an investigation led by FBI Special Agent Dale Cooper as he looked into the strange circumstances surrounding the murder of local homecoming queen Laura Palmer. As Agent Cooper unraveled the many mysteries associated with her death, the once seemingly innocent town of Twin Peaks and its inhabitants began to slowly reveal a more dark and sinister side. Never before had there been a show so capable of warming your heart with its timeless aesthetic, making you grin with its uniquely fun and quirky characters, and at the same time leave you gripping a pillow in fear as its demons terrorize your waking nightmares. Twin Peaks has it all. Drama, mystery, suspense, horror, romance, campy humor, film noir, and unforgettable music composed by Angelo Badalamente that could accompany any of those themes perfectly. Under the guiding hands of seasoned television writer Mark Frost and up-and-coming film director David Lynch, who at the time of filming was following his success with The Elephant Man in 1980 and Blue Velvet in 1986, it seemed like the sky was the limit for Twin Peaks. Although it is now considered by many to be one of the greatest television shows of all time, its initial success would be short-lived. <laughs> Oh, 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 good lord. <clears throat> what do we have here? Uh. Twin Peaks aired for only two seasons on ABC, and declining ratings led the network to insist that the identity of Laura's killer be revealed midway through the second season. After that, the show's storylines went somewhat off the track, so to speak that eventually ended on a strong cliffhanger conclusion directed by David Lynch himself. For many fans, the identity of Laura Palmer's killer was all that mattered. But for others, such as myself, Laura's murder was only scratching the surface of an even bigger mystery. After the second season aired its cliffhanger-filled finale and was unfortunately canceled, Twin Peaks would later return as the prequel film Fire Walk With Me which focused on the last days of Laura's life and was received quite poorly by critics and some fans of the show. Taking on a much darker tone overall than the series, the film chose to focus on the more nightmarish side of Twin Peaks, with much of the footage shot of the TV show's more whimsical characters left on the cutting room floor. Footage that wouldn't be seen by fans until the release with the Blu-ray collection, The Entire Mystery, in 2014. And rather than answering many of the show's mysteries, the film created even more unanswered questions perhaps frustrating some viewers. 
Over time, however, Fire Walk With Me has come to be considered by some Lynch's masterpiece, and it truly is a beautifully haunting film. So, you may be asking yourself, if Twin Peaks is so great, why was it canceled? And why was the follow-up film received so poorly? Well, if you ask me, it's simply because Twin Peaks was way ahead of its time. Over the years since the release of the film, the question of who killed Laura Palmer has shifted into a feverish dissection as fans have poured over every minute detail in hopes of deciphering the hidden meaning behind some of Lynch's more surreal or Lynchian moments. It has grown quite a cult following. Festivals, books, magazines, dedicated websites and more offer a deeper dive into the lore of the Twin Peaks universe. The most notable additions to the lore include the secret diary of Laura Palmer, the autobiography of FBI Special Agent Dale Cooper, My Life, My Tapes, and most recently a book written by Mark Frost titled The Secret History of Twin Peaks. But to prove my point, Twin Peaks is coming back thanks to a revival by the Showtime Network. Echoing a prophetic message from Laura to Cooper in the Black Lodge more than 25 years ago, fans will finally get to visit this peculiar and fascinating world once again in 2017. Hot damn, this pie is good. With many fans of the show, I wish for years that Twin Peaks would return to some form. When news first broke that the show was indeed coming back, I was at first filled with extreme jubilation, but then the terror set in. I was filled with so many doubts. How could the show continue after so many years had passed? How can the creators get around the fact that many of the original cast are now deceased, including Frank Silva who played the evil entity Bob? In order to ease some of these fears, let's take a look at the story so far and where we last left some of the characters. Then perhaps we'll have a better idea of what might happen next. Season one starts when local logger Pete Martell discovers a naked corpse wrapped in plastic while fishing on the bank of a river outside the town of Twin Peaks, Washington. When Sheriff Harry S. Truman, his deputies, and Dr. Will Hayward arrive, the body is identified as homecoming queen Laura Palmer. A seriously injured second victim, Ronette Pulaski, is discovered wandering down some train tracks. Once the authorities find her, she goes into a non-responsive state and is brought to the local hospital. FBI Special Agent Dell Cooper arrives in town, being called in to take over the investigation. Cooper's examination of Laura's body reveals a tiny piece of paper with a typed letter R inserted under her fingernail. Cooper informs the community that Laura's death matches the signature of a killer who murdered another girl in Deer Meadow, Washington the previous year, and that evidence indicates the killer lives in Twin Peaks. The story behind the first victim, Teresa Banks, would later be detailed in the film Fire Walk With Me. The town is shocked to learn that Laura has been living a double life. She was cheating on her boyfriend football captain Bobby Briggs with biker James Hurley and prostituting herself with the help of truck driver Leo Johnson and Canadian drug dealer Jacques Renault. Laura was also addicted to cocaine, which she obtained by coercing Bobby into doing business with the shady Canadian Jacques. Laura's father, attorney Leland Palmer, and mother Sarah both suffer nervous breakdowns over the death of their daughter, and Sarah sees visions of a strange, long-haired man. Laura's best friend, Donna Hayward, begins a relationship with James and with the help of Laura's look-alike cousin, Maddie Ferguson, Donna and James discover that Laura's psychiatrist, Dr. Lawrence Jacoby, was obsessed with Laura, but he is later proven innocent of the murder. Ben Horn, the richest man in Twin Peaks and owner of the Great Northern Hotel, plans to destroy the town's lumber mill along with its owner, Josie Packard, and murder his lover and Josie's sister-in-law, Catherine Martell, so that he can then purchase the land and reduce the price and complete a development project. Horn's sultry, troubled daughter, Audrey, becomes infatuated with Agent Cooper, and spies for clues in an effort to gain his affections. Cooper has a dream in which he is spoken to by a one-armed being who calls himself Mike. Mike says that Laura's murderer is a similar entity known as Bob. Killer Bob, a feral, denim-clad man with long gray hair, also matches the description of Sarah Palmer's visions. Later in the strange dream, Cooper finds himself decades older in a red room 
with Laura and a dwarf in a red business suit who engages in a strange, coded dialogue with Cooper. The next morning, Cooper tells Truman that if he can decipher the dream, he will know who killed Laura. Cooper and the sheriff's department eventually track down the one-armed man from Cooper's dream, a traveling shoe salesman named Philip Gerard. Gerard says that he knows a Bob, the veterinarian who treats Renault's pet Mina Bird. Cooper interprets these events to mean that Renault is the murderer, and with Truman's help, tracks Renault to One-Eyed Jacks, a brothel owned by Ben Horn across the border in Canada. He lures Renault back onto U.S. soil to arrest him, but Renault tries to escape and is shot and hospitalized. Leland Palmer, learning that Renault has been arrested, sneaks into the hospital and murders him, smothering him with a pillow. That same night, Horn orders Leo to burn down the lumber mill with Catherine trapped inside and has Leo gunned down by a man named Hank Jennings to ensure Leo's silence. Cooper returns to his room following Jacques' arrest and is shot by a masked gunman, leaving fans with a serious cliffhanger to end season one. Still with me? As you can see, there are a lot of players in the Twin Peaks universe, all with their own intertwined stories and motivations. But it's the initial mystery that we should be more concerned with here. Namely, the murder of Laura Palmer and the paranormal circumstances surrounding her death and Agent Cooper. I came to Twin Peaks looking for answers. I was sent here because there's been a string of new murders, this one included. I'm not yet sure if these new killings are connected to the Laura Palmer case in any way, but I feel that the answers I seek will make themselves known to me in time, in one way or another. Let's continue on with our examination of the story so far. As season two begins, we pick right back up where we left off, as Agent Cooper lies badly injured on his hotel room floor, shot by an unknown assailant, who would later be identified as Josie Packard, trying to cover her tracks. While he waits for help to arrive, Cooper has a vision in which a giant appears to him with three clues. There is a man in a smiling bag, the owls are not what they seem, and without chemicals, he points. The giant takes Cooper's gold ring and explains that when Cooper understands the three clues, his ring will be returned to him. Who are these beings that Cooper sees in his visions? Are they manifestations of his own psychic abilities? Are they actual beings from another place? Why are they helping Cooper? What is the significance of the ring? These are all good questions to consider going forward in our investigation. Tying up a few cliffhangers from season one, we see that Leo Johnson has survived but appears badly brain damaged. Catherine Martell is missing, presumed dead in the fire, and Leland Palmer seems rejuvenated with happiness at the death of Jacques Renault. He returns to work and his hair has turned snow white overnight. We learn that the shoe salesman Philip Gerard is the host for Mike, a demonic inhabiting spirit who has a history with the mysterious entity Bob. Mike reveals himself to Cooper when not using his medication. Without chemicals, he points. Mike informs Cooper that Bob has been possessing someone in Twin Peaks for years, but he does not reveal who Bob has under his control. Meanwhile, Donna takes on Laura's old route for the Meals on Wheels program in hopes of finding out more clues to Laura's murder. She befriends a young recluse named Harold Smith who is in possession of a secret diary that Laura kept. She and Maddie attempt to steal it from him, but Harold catches them in the act, loses all faith in humanity, and hangs himself in his orchid greenhouse. The officers take possession of Laura's secret diary and learn that Bob, noted as a friend of her father's, raped her repeatedly as a child and that she began using drugs to cope. Cooper believes that the killer is Ben Horn, but in a shocking twist, it is revealed to the audience that Leland is the host of Bob when he brutally murders his niece, Maddie. Cooper has doubts about Horn's guilt, but after gathering all the suspects together, the giant appears before Cooper again and reveals Leland to be the killer. When arrested, Bob assumes total control over Leland. He confesses to a series of murders before forcing Leland to commit suicide in his jail cell. As Leland dies, free of Bob's influence, he tells Cooper that Bob has possessed him ever since molesting him as a small child. He begs for forgiveness, sees a vision of Laura, and dies in Cooper's arms. The lawmen question whether Bob is real, roaming Twin Peaks in search of a new host, or if Leland was just mentally ill. After the mystery of Laura's murder is wrapped up, season two loses direction a bit, with the show searching for its next big mystery. 
Following a drug trafficking storyline involving the vengeful brother of Jacques Renault at Agent Cooper, the show begins to focus on the otherworldly dimensions known as the Lodges and their inhabitants, the paranormal places and beings that hide just below the surface of the quiet town of Twin Peaks. One could argue that the mystery of the Lodges are what Twin Peaks is truly all about, but there is no denying that they are the catalyst for the show's main storylines. The small bit of information we can gather about these dimensions and the spirits that inhabit them from the series and Firewalk With Me could also be a good indicator of what the new season may focus on. Cooper falls in love with a new girl in town named Annie Blackburn. Just as his old, treacherous, and insane FBI partner, Wyndham Earl, escapes from a mental institution, and begins tormenting Cooper with a series of arch-villainesque mind games and murders. It is later revealed that although Wyndham Earl is taking much delight in creating problems for his old partner, his true motivations in Twin Peaks are to find his way into the mythical Black Lodge and somehow harness its power for himself. All the while, Cooper is playing a dangerous game of chess with Earl. As he battles his old partner, he is also trying to discover the origins of Bob himself and learn more about the White and Black Lodges. With help from clues from Deputy Andy and the Log Lady, Cooper finally finds the entrance to the Lodge, which happens to resemble the red curtained room from his dream. He is greeted by the Dwarf, the Giant, and the Spirit of Laura Palmer. They each give Cooper coded prophecies and demonstrate the properties of the Black Lodge, which defy the laws of time and space. While trying to escape the Lodge with Annie, who Wyndham Earl has kidnapped and brought there against her will, Cooper encounters various terrifying doppelgangers of the dead before he runs into Earl who demands Cooper's soul for the safe release of Annie. Cooper agrees and is stabbed by Earl. But not to be outdone, Bob finds Earl, reversing time, and takes Earl's soul instead. Eventually, Cooper and Annie emerge from the lodge and are discovered by Sheriff Truman. Annie is hospitalized, but Cooper is well enough that he is brought to his room at the Great Northern. Upon waking, Cooper goes into the bathroom, smashing his head against the mirror, revealing his reflection to be that of the evil entity, Bob. And that is where our story so far comes to an end. Although the prequel film Fire Walk With Me takes place before the events of the TV series, it offers a ton of new wrinkles into the Twin Peaks lore, aspects of the lodges, their inhabitants, and introduces us to two FBI agents who go missing while investigating them. Agents Chester Desmond and Philip Jeffries. We learn of a ring that the victims of the Lodge inhabitants wear, a gold jade ring called the Owl Cave Ring. We learn that the spirits possibly travel using electricity, and that they consume the pain and suffering of humans which takes the form of creamed corn. There is a ton of interesting stuff to unpack here, information that can be interpreted a myriad of ways, and we see exactly what happened the night of Laura's murder, and who was present. Siri, I've been in Twin Peaks for three days now. It's 11.45 p.m. on Wednesday, April 11th, and I can feel that I'm closer than ever to my true objective. I'm still left with so many questions. Are the Lodge inhabitants good or evil? Who is in possession of the Owl Cave Ring taken from Annie at the end of the film? Has Cooper been possessed by Bob since the last episode aired? And what happened to Agents Chet Desmond and Philip Jeffries? The recent murders in the area were not connected. However, the darkness in these old woods has drawn me closer to the threshold. I'm going to venture into those old woods tonight, Siri. See where the path takes me. Wish me luck.
power is immense. It's been here before the dawn of man. Where will the story of Twin Peaks go next? No one knows. But perhaps with the power of the Alcave Ring, I'll give you all the answers I seek. If there is anything that Twin Peaks has taught us, it's that pain and suffering takes the form of creamed corn. Spirits can travel through electricity. Nothing is what it seems, and the afterlife can be a truly terrifying place. It's hell.